Hey everybody, it's Kay from Agent Boss. Whenever I mention that I'm half Japanese and half German, people seem really fascinated, though I'm not exactly sure why. Are you curious about the half Japanese experience in Japan? We gathered a group of half Japanese people to share their thoughts. If you're interested in the full version of this interview, sign up at AsianBoss.io to access our exclusive content and extended cuts. Let's dive right in. Thank you so much for sparing your time for the interview today. First of all, can you t tell us your name and maybe do a brief introduction about yourself? My name is Kiko. I am half American, half Japanese, and I grew up in Tokyo. My name is Yamaguchi, and I am a Japanese and Filipino mix. Hello, everyone. My name is Alice. I am from Brazil. I grew up in Brazil, and my father is Japanese. Uh, I live in Japan now for seven years. I am 26 years old and I am a singer here in Japan. Hi, my name is Kai and I was born in Caracas, but I was raised in Spain. My dad is from Venezuela and my mom is Japanese. So yeah, I'm like a cyborg, you know, it's like <laughs> a Frankenstein. I was born in Hawaii, but I moved to Japan when I was three months old. So I grew up here, but um, my dad is Japanese American. My mom is American. How did your parents meet? How did they get together? Um, they met in Hawaii and we're Christians so they go to church so they met in church and we're in Japan now as missionaries. My dad is the pastor of our church. Oh, they met back in Brazil. So my grandparents by father's side, they are Japanese but my father was born in Brazil. Yes. So they met when they were like very young in a small city back there and they fell in love and then they had a, my sister. So I have an older sister, she's 15 years older than me and after 15 years, here I am. When my dad was a student um, back in university, he, wanted, he traveled the world for, for a, a bit over a year and out of all the 30 countries that he visited, he fell in love with Turkey. And ever since then, he started um, looking for jobs in Turkey. And he finally, you know, managed to find a job. And then, um, he, and then he ended up marrying my mom yeah, in Turkey. Where did you grow up, in Japan or in the States? So I grew up mainly in Tokyo, but I went back and forth uh, to Denver, Colorado. I was born here and raised in Manila. So you were born here, and what, at what age did you move to Manila? Like three years old, up to I stayed in Manila three up to I finished my college degree. And when did you come choose to come back to Japan? It's like seven years ago, 2016, like approximately. And why did you want to come back to Japan? Um, maybe I feel like Japan is the happiest place on earth. When I was 19 years old, I moved to Japan. It was my first time coming to Japan and I already decided to stay. Growing up in Brazil, I learned to speak only Portuguese. I didn't speak any English or Japanese. So, and it was my first time traveling outside of Brazil as well. So I remember getting into the airplane and the flight attendant would ask me, what do you want to drink? I, I wouldn't know how to say water. Yes, and then in my first week here in Japan, my sister took me to a hiking. We were going up and then the people coming down, they would be, be like, Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa. And I would tell my sister, Konnichiwa, what it means? Oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> I was born uh, in Japan. We moved to the States when I was two. We spent about four years in the US and then came back when I was six and I've been living in Tokyo ever since. So pretty much all your school school years are like in Tokyo. Did you attend local school or like international school? So I was homeschooled up until high school and then for high school I went to international school. So for my mother, she kind of had two main reasons why she wanted to homeschool us. One was that she had been hearing a lot of stories of kids being bullied in Japanese school that were half at the time. And so she kind of wanted to avoid that for me and my sister. And then the other reason was because our family's Christian, and so she wanted to be able to give us an education with that background. We've just been here ever since I was a baby, for over 20 years. So when you were growing up in Japan, how do you remember uh, getting treated by other Japanese kids? Or did you attend local school or international school? I've been going to local school my whole life, and I, it's pretty normal. <laughs> no. 
I had friends and I wasn't、um, bullied or anything, fortunately. Kids are cruel, so I had some fights back in Spain and also fights here in Japan. Even though I was born and or raised here, but I think kids treat differently or bad to a kid that is different from them, you know, from the rest of the world. It doesn't matter if you're here, there, or not. if you're the different guy, you're going to be like. What were the fights about? Like, how how did the fights and bullying start? Like, the Nietzsche has a start, you know. Yeah. So,、uh, like, when I used to see、uh, two kids or three kids fighting, it was like you're an asshole, you're dumb, you're, you, you know, this stuff. But when I was in a fight, it was like you, you Chinese, you f Chinese, you, you, you know, like it was something bad. And I was like, I'm not even Chinese, but. Why are you saying it like it's like a bad thing, you know, kind of things like that? And also that happened to me in Japan, sometime. Yeah. In Turkey, I, I studied in a Japanese school, and、um, when I was young, when I was like third or fourth grade,、um, the kids at the school was were making fun of my eyelashes, the Japanese kids, and because because they were so long. So one day I went home and I cut my eyelashes. And then that same day, my mom came to me and she was like, "Trying, what happened to your eyelashes? They're so short." And I, I told my mom, "Well, because all my friends have short eyelashes and I only have long one, so <laughs> it got so short. But obviously, as as any other hair, it grew, grew, <laughs> it grew,、um, it regrew. I think it was a natural instinct to、um, to be able to be part of the team." Part of the class, I didn't want to be looked different, so I want. I, I I decided to cut my eyelashes so that I kind of look like them. How do you see yourself actually? Do you see consider yourself Japanese? Um, not much because I like adobo. It's a Philippine food. I like Philippine food so much, but Japan is good also. I don't mind being called Filipino or I don't mind being called Japanese because I just. I, you know, I just want to have the same respect as a full Japanese itself. Honestly, it's so cheesy, but I really feel like I'm really half. Like I have both cultures, and、um, so I don't. Yeah, I really don't think about like my identity in terms of like, oh, am I more Japanese or am I more American? In that sense, like I really don't think about it. I just view myself as being who I am. Honestly, I don't really know. So when people ask me. I guess I say American because our home we speak English and that was my first language. But then I do feel like I'm Japanese when I'm in America. So <laughs> I consider myself Japanese. I consider myself American. I don't think those are necessarily mutually exclusive.、Um, I remember taking tests or like standardized tests in the states,、um, and they would kind of you check a box. You know, are you Asian, Caucasian, you know, etc. Um, but I would never really feel like I was either of those either. I identify myself as the three cultures: Venezuela, Spain, and Japan. And that,、uh, like five years ago, I was really confused because whenever someone told me, "Where are you from?" Well, I was born in Caracas, but I feel myself as Spanish and Japanese and also Venezuelan. So now I'm like, whenever everyone tells me I'm, I'm from the three countries. I don't give. I don't give a. You know. Do you think like、um, the Japanese society perceives or sees you the same way like you want them to see you, like the same way you portray your own self? Do you think they agree like to look at you as a person with three identities? No, they see me as a well. I mean, I'm generalizing. Everything I'm talking is generalizing. They see me as a foreigner because I wasn't raised in Japan. I, that's what I think. I moved to Japan like a year and a half ago, and I was looking for a, a, an apartment. The real estate agent he had to call the、uh, owners of the apartments because I was Japanese because I have the Japanese citizen I have my passport I'm Japanese but I was raised in a foreign country so he had to make clear that to the owners so from the six apartments that I was interested in only two were okay with that so that was a little bit of a shock to me because I thought. Even though I have some、uh, cultural education in Japan, because I know how Japanese people are, I know how they think, I know what to do and not to do.、Um, that was a shock that they treated me as a as a guy. Yeah. 
So were you ever discriminated against purely because you were half? I would say, again, this is not that interesting of an answer, but no, I've never felt really discriminated against for being half. To be honest, here in Japan, like, even though I'm half, my passport is Japanese, whenever that I say that I'm a Japanese, they think like I'm messing with them because, you know, the accent is different. And then at my work, um, it's not all of them, but most of the people here, like, they treat the half people with half of respect. And that's quite um, hard. Like, my friend out there, she got harassed by a Japanese man inside the pachinko. Like, we were playing pachinko and then a Japanese suddenly touched her breast. I contact the police and this is what happened. Like, when that incident happened, I was like this and then, oh, okay, I cannot beat this man. I was like this to the all of the buttons in pachinko. I press it all. And then when the police arrive, we are the one who's being interrogated. The Japanese man is the um, abuser, the hentai. He said, um, I asked if I can touch her boobs. And then she said, hi, onigaishimasu. And then the police was like interviewing us. Why your friend is in Japan? Why are you in Pachinko? What are you doing here? So ever since, how do you know this person? Like, we are not the criminal. Why we are being interviewed like this? And they know the CCTV already. Why Why you have to like interrogate us do you feel sad angry or like how do you how do you respond to these i will answer with sarcasm like you know if you think that i'm half okay i will pay the tax in half i will pay in grocery in half i'll pay my pension in half if you think that i'm half that should be our benefits as a half there's so many times that um you know i think you're treated differently but at the same time it's not as blatant as maybe in the West. People won't shout at you and, you know, you know, yell uh, racial slurs or slang. Uh, but it's kind of how they look at you and how they treat you. I mean, on the train, I remember a certain example where an elderly man kind of said something to me. I think we were standing in the, the section that's kind of reserved. It was a packed train and I was, I was in that kind of section I was standing. But uh, he was talking to me while I was on my headphones. And I had to take my headphones off to, to see, hear what he was saying. And he was just mumbling kind of gibberish. Um, but he was pointing out at me and, you know, not happy with what I was doing. Um, just to, I think, draw a point or draw attention to the fact that you're different and that they don't actually like uh, having you around. But it's usually the extent of it. It's usually something that you can brush off. And I think once you deal with that enough, uh, it tends not to bother you anymore. A few times in Turkey, be, they would be like doing this and say chin chan chan, chin chan chan, but <laughs> I mean, I didn't take it much serious. I just laugh at it. I, I was I was never, um, I was always proud to be half Japanese, so I never took it personal. I just laugh at it. But I would say that's quite re, um, discriminatory, you know. Thing to do to someone. <laughs> so what are some advantages um, you might enjoy as a half Japanese person that pure Japanese people don't get to enjoy? Oh, the communication. The communication that I can get with Japanese people, with Spanish people, with American people, with whatever, it made me a more open-minded person to be raised in three different cultures. Yeah, there's something that's called the Gaijin card. I don't know if people are aware of that. I'm sure it's been brought up already. But um, you tend to get away with things on the fringe. So, you know, as a half Japanese, half American, you know, you could get away with a lot that normal Japanese wouldn't. I mean, the societal norms don't quite apply to you to the same standard. I think in terms of getting a job, um, a lot of the foreign companies in particular that tend to pay better than Japanese companies um, will appreciate the fact that you're bilingual or bicultural and you can understand both of the contexts. Do you think you'll be able to get the same advantages if you're half black or if half Asian? Do you get these advantages because you're half white? What do you think? For me personally, I think in terms of business, it gets down to you know people's skills and abilities. I think there's a clear advantage to having a mixed background but uh, it really depends on what you do with it and I wouldn't necessarily 
uh, put so much emphasis from my side on you know their race, but I understand some companies might do that. I know that Japanese people uh, love Hakujin, you know, white people and blonde, blue eyes, really white, pale uh, skin color. So maybe if you are half white, maybe you experience uh, some advantages that I don't even know. I've heard that uh, mixed Japanese with black people are more uh, pro probably to be uh, bullied or discriminated. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that. So whenever we interview half Japanese people, it generates a lot of interest from our viewers from overseas. So why do you think people from other countries are so fascinated by half Japanese experiences in Japan? Uh, seeing halfus, uh, it's like seeing like a, a cultural bridge between two between two cultures that are so different. So that's why I think the viewers maybe think that we can explain or make them feel how is the real Japanese culture, you know? Maybe because the curiosity when you don't live here, that triggers you. Like Japanese are so generous, polite, that's why they are so fascinated. Because let's be honest, like majority of people like stereotyping. Um, if, uh, if I'm in the Philippines, I'm considered as Japanese. If I do something bad, it will be like the whole Japan's image. You know, in, in pop culture and in media, they have this kind of concept of hybrids. And being a hybrid is kind of like an interesting concept. You are you have a foot in both worlds. Um, if you have something to share, and I think, you know, this is a perfect platform for it, talking about um, being mixed race and being half, I think being proud of that. Um, because you're neither one or the other, but you're both. And I think that's something to be proud about. And you really don't hear about that enough, I think, you know, there's certainly national pride, um, but I hope that we can go beyond that and look uh, across, you know, regional boundaries and kind of these lines drawn in the sand about countries to talk about a real conversation about what it means to be a citizen of the world.